Well, here we are again. Uh, it's now uh, Monday, the uh, 9th. Well, when we last talked yesterday, I was uh, trying to get a uh, tape drive on the uh, RS6000 over here. Uh, you can sort of see that the uh, workbench has got quite a lot of crap on it now. Um, well, what ended up happening is I got this uh, it's called an AND data co and that go and that go a, a closer. <clears throat> um, originally, it had just some drive blanks, kind of like this here, mounted in there, and uh, I needed something, so I had a CD-ROM drive for this guy. Because when I tried to do the OS install, I ended up having to use a. Uh, well, I started out with a broken HP. Oh gosh. I hurt my back yesterday, so that's no good. Started out. Oh, God, I gotta remember not to blow dust around. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on here. Uh, give me a second. I gotta peel a label off here. Make sure that we protect the guilty or whatever you know here. But I started out with an HP drive enclosure that I thought had an HP drive in it. Let's, you can sort of see what's going on here. Now, in retrospect, there may be nothing wrong with the drive that was in here. Because I think the power supply is no good. Uh, there you can see it's that 50 pin. So I was able to use a 50 pin, a 50 pin on the RS6000. But I could never get it to work right. Ah, beating my head against the wall, right? Well, well, it turns out, well, there's nothing wrong with the drive. Presumably, there's something wrong with the... Um, with the power supply. I don't think it's putting 12 volt out. So that thing went in the in the pile. Then I have uh, this guy, a uh, Panasonic KXLD 740 4X CD-ROM. I picked it up for uh, $6 uh, up in Appleton a couple months ago. It is a SCSI it's supposed to be a portable SCSI drive. It came with a parallel, or excuse me, a SCSI uh, card for PCMCIA for a laptop. It's got a battery door and a whole nine yards. And if I hit a button there, it'll open up. Didn't work. It would spin the disk, but it would never boot. Uh, so I suspect that the drive may not, this drive may not be strong enough to uh, to work anymore. I've never even really knew if it worked at all. So, in the end, that's why I needed the CD drive. So I said, well, you know, I've got this enclosure. It doesn't have any hard drives in it, so I'll uh, put the CD drive and the tape drive. I showed you that Exabyte tape drive yesterday. It's an IBM branded Exabyte made 5 gigabyte native 10 gigabyte compressed tape drive. Runs on these little 8 millimeter data cartridges. This is a Sony one. I even have a branded IBM cleaning. It looks a little bit bigger. It's a little bit thicker than a cassette tape. When we used to run these things, so you could get 5 or 10 gigabytes on those, and then Exabyte came out with the 160M uh, XL tape, which I honestly don't remember what the capacity of these are. It's more than that. So this is 160 meters, and the other one I suspect based off of the model number a QG112M it's probably 112 meters anyway well, I'll show you what's going on with this drive but unfortunately it don't work it's broken uh, let's see if I can turn it on also this enclosure makes a hell of a racket you can hear just how loud that fan is that's just something that has just drives in it well you can see here too a lot of drives kind of do this where if, see I'm hitting the button, nothing. If the host hasn't sent sort of like an initialization down the SCSI chain, they won't work. It just doesn't want, it won't turn on. So what I'm going to do here to show you what's going on in case it ever comes to you, I'm going to put the R6000 secure mode. You can take, I think you can take the key out in all those positions, yeah. I'll put it in secure mode. That way it won't boot, but it will power on the SCSI chain. And I'm going to 
turn on the rest of it to show you what's going on here. Oh my gosh, there's so many power switches now. I don't know where any of them are, but I feel... There's that one. There's that one. And I gotta go on this side of the camera. Turn on the last one. This is the hard one to reach because it's on the. There we go. It's on the back side. Real goofy. And then I'll turn on the uh, system. You can hear the HP drive is doing something. That's spinning up. All manner of things are coming alive in there. We go. Now you can see the. I'll leave the terminal off. That's fine. You can see the uh, tape drive is just sitting there blinking. So I said, oh, well, you know, maybe that means it's got to clean. Pretty sure that doesn't mean it's got to clean, but hey, what do you know, right? So I took this tape. I don't particularly care about the tape. By the by, there is a. Uh, little lever right here which you can flip and open it up. It looks like a tiny little VHS cassette. Which is effectively what it is. It's the same capacity, or rather the same form factor as the 8mm VHS tapes, or videotapes, but they don't work. So don't don't bother trying. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to put that in there. And the way these things are supposed to feel is you get it in about there, and you had a mechanism that would sort of catch and sort of suck it in like a VCR. So I said, well, you know, you just kind of keep pushing it in there. And this side is real tight. This side is real loose. Like it's jammed on this side. And that could explain the blinking light. Part of me now goes, well, how the hell am I going to get that out of there? There's nothing necessarily wrong with the tape. I was able to slide the shutter over on the... Um, right tab and I'm able to hook a little screwdriver in there and I'm able to wiggle the tape out a little bit harder to do one handed and you know this worked a lot better yesterday there we go so hey everybody I've got a 5 gig tape drive that don't work so I've got some other stuff in the pile here I've got some newer drives which are in some of my model, uh, my F50s, our F6000 F50s. So I'll see if I can't pull one of those out of a machine that's not really being used. And uh, I'll pop it in the enclosure, and uh, we will uh, rejoin. I want to keep... Uh, oh, jeez, I totally forgot the whole point of this damn thing. I've got some Exabyte drives that use this 160 cartridge, but I want something that uses... It's an IBM drive. I want it so that the system knows what it is. And frankly, I don't care if it's in 5 gigabytes. We don't even got a 1 gigabyte drive in the system. So having a uh, really big tape drive doesn't do us any, any good. So that's where we're at for right now. Um, you can also see down here on the system it's sitting at 200. In other words, it's ready to boot. So I'm just going to turn it right back off. And so since it did the init initialization of the whole chain, it's just fine. But, well, um, stay tuned, folks. I suppose we could always use this guy, which is, you know, only <laughs> falling apart. But uh, looks like this is a uh, it's another Sony DAT drive, an SDT9000, whatever that is. Uh... Boy, these scuzzy cables are in pretty rough shape. It looks like they got got in an accident. So I don't know if that's going to work anyway. But or at least not in this enclosure. So I will uh, follow up with you guys in a little bit.